Andreas, most cosmologists believe that the theory of inflation is an accurate way to describe the beginning of the universe, and I know you do as well. And the general implications of that are two things. One is that our own universe, our own space-time continuum, uh, is orders of magnitude, maybe exponentially bigger than what we currently see, because there's nothing special about the end of the universe or what we can see. It's just a matter of time from light to travel since the beginning. And secondly, that the implications of the, ma the math is that if inflation starts, it, doesn't, it can't or doesn't stop, so that there'll be large numbers, very large numbers, maybe infinite numbers of, of other universes. So do you agree with the inflation but you question some of the, the conventional implications. I do. Although maybe first I should acknowledge that the reason people take those conventional approaches is very well founded. So, so it's a very natural, if you believe in a little bit of inflation, it's very easy to conclude there must be a lot. So, so there's something very natural about that. But then it leads to some really weird stuff. And it leads to the um, uh, beginning of the universe you don't really control. It lead, lead, it leads, I believe, to um, a need. I mean, inflation is advertised as a solution to tuning problems, but the fine-tuning fine problem, where it looks like every constant of physics is just perfect for human life. Well, it's not, not those tuning, but the tunings where the universe itself looks delicately balanced yeah, yeah, at the, at the yeah. beginning of the Big Bang. Right. Not, initial not in terms conditions. Of the initial conditions. Yeah. And and entropy, this is this entropy. is something. I, I mean, I think some people kid themselves that the this eternal inflating picture. Is, is free of those problems, but I, I think it is. So I've concluded that it has some serious problems of its own. And that's forced me to consider something other than the simple extrapolation back that you might naively do with, with an inflation theory. And one of the things that's actually um, motivated that is the dark energy and the possibility that we're surrounded by a horizon not much bigger than what we see today that could really be the edge of the universe, the, not just the edge of what we see, but the edge. I mean, that, that's stop. really a minority position because, I mean, it sounds strange. Why, why are we able to see the edge of the universe? What, what, that seems unduly coincidental. Well, there's a lot of talk about these coincidences, and, and I think once you, um, you know, people wonder why is the value of the cosmological constant, the dark energy, yes, what yes, it is, yes. but once you, once you understand that, I'm not saying we do, but that's where it comes from. That's where that coincidence comes from. It's nothing other than that. It's not a new coincidence. It's the same one it, we already we already live with. But what I've done that, is take the quantum theory. Say, suppose the quantum theory of the cosmological constant is different than than what we have assumed, right. and it, where it really does close off and give us a finite universe. And this is, I, I'm not. It's a minority view, but it's certainly. I'm not the first person to suggest that. No, sure, and, sure. And, but some would say that a, a finite universe is very strange because uh, you have, uh, um, it, it's like an arbitrary number as opposed to infinite, which is uh, normal or, or zero. Well, well, I'd say to counter that is, is that infinity, I, to me, infinity doesn't mean anything at all because in science, we will only have a, ever have a finite amount of data We'll only ever do science for a finite amount of time. So whatever data we have, there will always be a finite theory to match it. No, I agree. You never need infinity. But, but that's an epistemological and knowledge uh, limitation. It's not an ontological or, or what's real limitation. But, but I think we, we should respect that. And actually, one of, the, one of the things, I mean, to be honest, I'm fine with <laughs> infinite theories too. But the ones, the ones I'm reacting to have some serious problems and it's caused me to consider this other alternative it is radical and when i when i first began to think that way i was very used to thinking about the infinite universe mm -hmm. and many pocket universes etc okay. etc and and i felt claustrophobic when, when i <laughs> when i moved from that to thinking about a universe that's maybe just 20 percent bigger than what we see today so only you know less than 20 billion uh, <laughs> Some, yeah whatever like years just or... You know, just not enough billion light years for, <laughs> light years for me. So, so that, that was pretty weird. Huh? Yeah, it's closing okay. in on me. I, I, I really surprised myself. That was a really weird feeling to feel yeah. so, so uncomfortable with that. But in, in your view of a, of a finite universe only 20% larger than what we see, it just seems so oddly coincidental with what we see. It makes us more special than we're supposed to be under normal scientific ways of thinking. 
Well, people um, wrestle with these specialness questions inside and out, and people worry about that. Um, it's already a problem that people think about regarding the cosmological constant and the value. Why, why do we live at a time when it's coming to dominate the universe? And, right. and right, right. in my theory, right. It's the exact same puzzle. It's not that we solved it, but it's not an extra puzzle. Okay, I, it's it's just buys into. I just I, don't understand that technically. Why is the cosmological constant, which which describes the the increasing or decreasing expansion uh, rate of expansion of the universe, with the size of the universe being what we? Why why are those two related? We don't know, but they are. How, what well, I mean, uh, how, how do oh, you know? Oh, they oh, are? oh, sorry. Why are they? Why why is it related to the size? Yes. So we don't know why. We live in a time when no, there's no, so much cosmological right. constant. That but, but, but it's interesting. So, so Why does it relate to the size? So, so, so our future, so if, if there's a cosmological constant as opposed to something that could disappear, yeah. so the different theories could have different futures, but if it's a cosmological constant, our future is something called a sitter space where all there is is the cosmological constant, nothing else. Everything right. else dilutes Too far away. away. And, yeah. Yeah. and so you have a cosmological constant, and then you have a... Um, interesting feature called an event horizon and that's a well-known feature so so if you have only a cosmological constant you have something called the sitter space and that has an interesting feature called an event horizon which many people know about because black holes black also holes have right. them and and one thing that's interesting about black holes is that if you're standing outside a black hole and you throw something in you'll never see it cross the event horizon yeah. you you the way general relativity works is all you see is it approaching the event horizon? Yeah. It takes forever just to yeah. approach it. And people have used that fact to consider a quantum theory of the black hole where from the point of view of an observer sitting outside, there really is no inside. The event horizon is the edge of physics um, from the point of okay. view of that observer. Now, I've just imported that concept to the de Sitter space, so, so the, to the space of, of only a cosmological constant. So I say the horizon, the event horizon in that space, which surrounds us, yes, yes. Um, is the edge as well. And there's no physics outside of it. That, that's a, certainly a radical change from the classical theory of yeah, relativity. But that's at a future time. What about now you're saying that the cosmological constant is this, is the, and the size of the universe being what we, almost what we see right. are related? Yes. Why? Yes. Be, so, so I'm, I'm, so it's the cos cosmological constant that creates this horizon, which I okay. then identify as the edge. Ah. So it's the presence of the cosmological constant that um, makes it possible to have this horizon, and and the size of the horizon is dictated by the value of the cosmological constant. Yeah, I still get back to this amazing coincidence that we at this time can no see all the cosmological this. constant. Yeah. So you'll find, I, you know, I don't know how many people at this conference, a couple hundred? Yeah, You'll hundred probably percent. find a couple hundred <laughs> different answers <laughs> to that. And, and I've, at the moment, I'm, I'm pretty tired of worrying about that. Yeah. I, I don't get excited about that. I think, so one of the, one of the interesting things is that the, the um, so, so in physics, we, Talk about the size of the space we work in as the, Hil the, the talk about the space we work in as the Hilbert space, and the cosmological constant has a direct mathematical, numerical connection to the size of the Hilbert space, the mm -hmm. finite size of the Hilbert space, and so I want to understand that space, and I think when I do, I'll know better why the lamb, why the cosmological constant has the value that it does. But I'm not, I'm, I'm focusing on other things, mm -hmm. not worrying too much about that coincidence right now.